Body piercings have become quite common in recent years. Everything from ear piercings, tongue bars, eyebrows and belly button rings becoming an everyday sight in many places. However, piercing is a form of body modification that has been around for centuries. But what happens when it's taken to the extreme? In today's episode of Unusual as Usual, we're looking into the holy fable of the human pincushion, aka Mirindejo. Arnold Gerrit Hensis was born on the 6th of August 1912 in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. But our story actually starts in 1945 when, at the age of 33, he claimed he became aware that his body was able to withstand great trauma, mostly with no ill effects. He believed God was using him through his invulnerability to show us that there was something better out there. He was convinced that materialism only resulted in misery and war. So he left his job at a design firm and moved to Amsterdam where he adopted the stage name Mirin Dejo, which is a play on the Esperanto word for marvelous, Mirin Dejo. Esperanto was the language he believed should be used around the world as a way of uniting mankind. Whilst in Amsterdam, he performed in pubs and earned money by demonstrating his unusual ability. Decades before there were hippies, Dejo was using his so-called God-given talents to preach love, peace, a unifying life force and disdain for materialism. Although technically, Dejo was not a performer in sideshow, he was performing a traditional sideshow act known as the human pincushion and clearly was one of the best at it. As sure as the performers that had come before him had done, he told fanciful tales about how he lived in India for many years where he studied meditation, finding his inner being and honing his skills with the help of Hindu fakirs, although there is no documented evidence of him ever having travelled to India. On the 31st of May 1947, as word of his remarkable talent spread, Dejo was invited to the Zurich Hospital for study. Many people, including the chief of surgery and several doctors, students and members of the press witnessed the tests. They were astonished to see fencing foils piercing Dejo's chest and abdomen, live before their very eyes, leaving both the doctors and audience baffled. The doctors watched in amazement as the skin pushed outwards on his chest and the fencing foil finally broke through. Despite all the doctors' tests, Dejo seemed quite well with the fencing foil sticking through him. He even walked to the x-ray lab where they took shots verifying that there was no trickery involved. The foil did indeed pierce his abdomen all the way through, passing amongst major organs. Although not as widely documented as his piercing feats, there were claims that his invulnerability had been proven by numerous means. In an interview with Time magazine, he declared his invulnerability had been tested with burning irons, boiling water, and having been shot in the head from a half yard distance on two separate occasions. He supported his claims by exhibiting two scars allegedly from the shots one in the centre of his forehead and the other just above his right eye. Dejo had grown to become a deeply religious man and some media outlets even labelled him a messiah. According to some reports, Dejo could hear voices from guardian angels and they told him what to do. His public displays were often concluded with a lecture and a message of peace and love. He went on to perform nightly at the Corso Theatre in Zurich, the city's largest music hall, where he would allow his assistants to plunge fencing foils straight through his body, miraculously missing all major organs and leaving Dejo relatively unharmed. It was even reported by Time magazine on the 23rd of June 1947 that Dejo stated, I am no artist but a prophet. If you believe in God, your will can dominate your body. People wouldn't believe me if I just started talking, but after seeing my invulnerability, they will. Eventually, 
To prove his talent was real while on stage, he took to being impaled by three 8mm hollow skewers, the end of which had been connected to water supply. He would then pump water through those skewers, becoming a human fountain. Dejo had a number of assistants whose main, if not only, task was to push the steel implements through his body. Members of the audience often fainted and during a performance in Switzerland, apparently someone even suffered a heart attack. As a result, Swiss officials intervened and his license for public displays was withdrawn. Dejo was now only allowed to perform in a closed auditorium, which he actually considered to be a blessing, and he used it to continue to address his audience and preach his message. Several doctors examined Dejo, even performing x-rays on him with a sword still sticking through his body. They discovered that the blade was indeed piercing him, though they had no idea how he was able to perform the manoeuvre without injury. Nowadays, modern researchers believe he may have created a large fistula, a scar tunnel that forms when the skin is pierced and left to heal, much like an ear piercing. Of course, if this was the case, then Dejo's fistulas were an extreme version. Modern doctors and body piercing professionals agree that it's probably how Dejo achieved this incredible feat. Little by little, he and his assistant would drive a sharp object a little further into a hole in his abdomen, leaving it in place, letting it heal, and then driving it in a little further. Photos of Dejo's back show it is riddled with scars and holes, which are probably failed fistulas where their efforts were blocked by bone, nerves, major organs, or something too painful to get past. Eventually, Dejo had at least four fistulas that went all the way through. He probably lived with metal bars inserted through them all the time, and when it came time for a performance, those were removed. His assistant had only to carefully slide the fencing foil through the fistulas at the proper angles, just like they practiced together many times before. And thus the doctors were fooled, the magician stumped and the audiences thrilled. On the 11th of May 1948, he was allegedly instructed by voices in his head to swallow a 35 centimeter long steel needle, which he believed would somehow dematerialize inside him by the time the surgeon went in to remove it. The metal needle did not dematerialize and after two days, it was surgically removed. About 10 days later, Dejo laid down and sunk into a deep meditation. He never woke up. An autopsy was performed almost immediately, even though the law stated that a period of three days had to pass before one was to be performed and this revealed that Dejo had died of an aortic rupture on the 26th of May, 1948, aged 36. Dejo is seldom remembered, largely due to the fact that he was a rather localized phenomenon, contained to just the Netherlands and Switzerland, and for only a little over three years. However, for those that know of him, know the mysterious legacy he left behind. And there we have it. The holy fable of the human pincushion, Marin Dejo. He put a new meaning to the term, the holy one. Do you think he genuinely believed he was being protected by a higher power? Or do you think he made it up to add to the mystery of his unique skill? Let me know in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And as always, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more modified marvels, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.